Good afternoon from Milan, Italy. My name is Alessandro Perra and I am the scientific director of Guna Pharmaceuticals. Today, I'm very glad to introduce you to the collagen injectable medical device. So we will speak about a really innovative approach in the field of regenerative medicine for what it concerns the uh, tissues of the musculoskeletal apparatus. So we are in the field of orthopedics, rheumatology, and sport medicine. When I speak about GUNA medical devices based on collagen, I'm speaking about a blend of uh, swine origin collagen plus some uh, vegetal or mineral substances which are called ancillary or auxiliary exactly because they exert an auxiliary action. The main action is due to the swine origin collagen, but we will see even more in depth which are the characteristics of this swine origin collagen. What is interesting, making a jump already inside of the possible clinical application of these class three injectable collagen-based medical devices, is that you will be able to provide your patients with a bioscaffold of natural collagen. It is something very well known, especially in orthopedics, but the real news is that you will be able, in a very easy way, to inject this bioscaffold of extracellular matrix exactly where you need it, with a simple, with a simple injection. The range of products is done by 13 different medical devices. Some of them, you can see, are specific for specific region of the body. Some other, that are these ones in the middle of the slide, are as specific for a, a local region of the body, but specific for the origin of the pain or are specific in order to even better support the histology of the collagenic structure. The fact to have 13 different injectable collagen-based medical devices, it's very nice because you will have the chance to combine more than one in order, for instance, to treat a specific patient with a specific uh, pain origin in that specific region of the body. In terms of which kind of uh, collagen is used in these uh, medical devices, we are speaking about hydrolyzed type 1 swine origin collagen from dermis. It's interesting also to take a look uh, of the numbers about this collagen. You can see in the slide, in the picture, that they are presented into the form of vials. Each vial contains 2 milliliters. In a 2 milliliter vial, you can find 100 micrograms micrograms of hydrolyzed collagen. If in this moment you are asking yourself, 100 microgram of hydrolyzed collagen is uh, a good quantity or it is too little, I think that can be interesting to make a equal to. In 100 microgram of hydrolyzed collagen, you have a quantity of molecules which is equal to 2 per 10 to the 14th. So it's a really big, big quantity of hydrolyzed type 1 collagen that you will inject in the specific site according to the specific pathology of the specific patient. We like to speak because of all these specifics in terms of personalized therapy. Why swine collagen? Because uh, many different types of collagen are available. Because the swine collagen is the most novel by an histological point of view. And especially 
because it is the most similar to that one of the humans. In fact, the similarity between the alpha-1 chain collagen type 1 of a human and of a pig is around 97%. And for what it concerns the alpha-2 chain of the tropical collagen, the similar similarity is around 93%. So this is absolutely important also in terms of safety, as we will see even better later on. Interesting is also that in the swine origin collagen, the quantity of hydroxyproline, which is, as you know very well, the pivotal amino acid of the four in the tropocollagen structure. Just a little wrap up. Tropocollagen is the original uh, brick in the building of collagen. Its structure is due to chains of glucose and galactose and four amino acids, hydroxylysine, glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. You know that speaking about tropocollagen, we are used to speak about the triple helix of tropocollagen. This is a really masterpiece of Mother Nature because this kind of structure gives the tropocollagen peculiar uh, characteristics like inextensibility, but also a big resistance, which is important, for instance, for structures like tendons and ligaments. Well, in the swine origin type 1 hydrolyzed collagen, we have the highest concentration of hydroxyproline, which is, once again, among the four amino acids of tropocollagen, the most important one, because it's the pivot able to give stability to the tribal eggs. But also, we choose this kind of origin because of the safety. You can see very well in this uh, uh, papers that uh, porcine collagen scaffolds are used also for cranial neurosurgery and they are totally safe, effective and easy to use. So we don't have any possibility of uh, immunological response. It is also used, swine origin collagen, in aesthetic medicine for instance, for dermal filler used sometimes in order to correct acne scars. So it's uh, safe, novel, histologically perfect to, to, to produce this kind of injectable medical device for the treatment of acute and chronic benign musculoskeletal pain. Beside the most important component, which is the collagen, we have the auxiliary substances. You can see by this slide that in every different uh, medical device, we have always the same hydrolyzed type 1 swine origin collagen, but different auxiliary substances. They are some herbal extracts, others are vitamins or minerals especially for what it concerns the herbal extracts, you have to consider that according to the traditional medicine, namely phytotherapy, each herbal extract exerts its uh, anti-inflammatory activity mainly on a specific target. That's the reason why you find in your uh, proposal of collagen medical devices 13 different medical devices because each one is specific for what it concerns the specific even though secondary uh, anti-inflammatory activity due to the auxiliary substance different products just two examples since uh, our time it's not so long for instance in md knee you can find the presence of arnica montana Arnica montana exerts a specific activity at the level of the knee, but it's even more interesting to see why this substance can exert an anti-inflammatory activity. 
Once again, I would like to underline that the anti-inflammatory activity of the auxiliary substances is absolutely secondary because the main action of these products is mechanical, as we are going to see, and it is due to the collagen. But let's stay for 30 seconds on Arnica Montana as an example of how do we study the pharmacological activity of these auxiliary substances. Arnica Montana, because of the presence of an active principle named elenaline, is able to block or downregulate the tra nuclear translocation of NFKB. As you know very well, NFKB, I hope you can see my pointer in this moment on the slides, is the substance that once the interleukin 1 beta binds its specific receptor on the target cell and a very complex uh, uh, signaling pathways start, is the substance able to go inside of the nucleus, activating some part of DNA, which uh, um, codify for pro-inflammatory mediators. So you can easily understand that if you are able to block an FKB, you are actually blocking the cascade of the inflammation. So the results will be a pain reduction, an inflammation and trauma resolution, and uh, in case of surgery, a post-operative settings modulation. This is the way that this very well-known herbal extract, Arnica Montana, works. It's very interesting. Another example of uh, an auxiliary substance. In this case, it is uh, a vitamin, ascorbic acid, and it is present in uh, MD tissue. Is that uh, ascorbic acid is uh, crucial I'd say fundamental for the hydroxylation of proline. Do you remember the most important amino acid present in the tropocollagen, hydroxyproline? If you have the catalytic activity of ascorbic acid on proline, you will metabolize proline in hydroxyproline. So we can say that ascorbic acid is a booster in the metabolism of tropocollagen. This is the principle that we have followed uh, in the moment we formulated as a company these 13 different uh, medical devices. Another information I would like to share with you that speaking about uh, collagen-based injectable medical devices, we are exactly in that uh, field of uh, modern medicine named functional tissue engineering. It is uh, an umbrella of treatments where we can find stem cells or something else, but now they are speaking especially about the possibility offered by the ECM bioscaffold, you can see in the blue cycle. Exactly there we are with our products. We can provide an extracellular matrix bioscaffold to the structure of the musculoskeletal system. In this picture, you can see the effect of uh, something like our collagen medical devices. In this case, uh, the product was not the collagen, but proteoglycans. You can see in this uh, slide, on the left side of the slide, A, a shame operated anterior crochet ligament, but not treated with an ECM bioscaffold provided by proteoglycans. You can see that by an histological point of view, the tissue is not good. On the right side, B picture, you can see the same ACL, but in this case treated with proteoglycans. You can see how beautiful is the tissue by an histological point of view. 
Well, the same is when you use another kind of ECM bioscaffold, in this case provided by collagen. Also interesting is in terms of intervention timing for the collagen, because you can see how long is uh, the, uh, the possibility you have to use this collagen in the repair and regeneration of a tissue, namely, for instance, tendons or ligaments. Once you have managed the acute inflammatory process, for instance, with the RISE treatment and, uh, and SAIDs, from that moment, you can introduce the collagen through injections in order to accompany all the long repair mechanisms that always we observe after an injury. So in this way, you will speed up the repair and regeneration process. Very good, especially in terms of functional recovery for your patient. For, so from one side, you have the induction of the inflammation pro, pro resolution phase due to the auxiliary substances and the tissue repair and regeneration due to the presence of collagen. A very interesting and modern approach to the musculoskeletal disorder. In this picture um, from uh, uh, Journal of Applied Physiology uh, 2011, you can see how if you don't use for a long time any anti-inflammatory treatment such as uh, NSAIDs, biologically, naturally, you can see the neoproduction of collagen in order to repair the tissue. But if instead of two or three days of NSAIDs therapy, you go on, NSAIDs block the production of collagen, even though your patient is under eccentric exercise. So interesting the possibility to manage with the sales of something else, the acute inflammatory process, but immediately it's important to intervene with uh, the collagen, the injectable collagen. How do these uh, products act? It's interesting. I already told you their main uh, action is mechanical. And it can be referred to the capability of some tissues, included collagen, to have the characteristics of anisotropy. Anisotropy is the characteristic to develop just in one direction a tensile force. In this case, you can see in the, in the left side of the picture a fibroblast which is embedded in the extracellular matrix. And these vertical lines are the collagen fibers. Please look that they are parallel and aligned to each other. Because of that structure and that orientation of the collagen fibers, the anisotropy of the tissue is very good. Once you will exert a tensile force, the fibroblast will be stretched and the stretch of the fibroblast is the start for the signaling inside of the fibroblast for the production of neocollagen. That's the reason why in rehab medicine they are used to do eccentric exercise in order to speed up the production of neocollagen. In this slide, you can see some microscopical uh, picture of a healthy ligament, picture A. Once again, all the collagen fibers are parallel and aligned to each other, and a damaged ligament. It's easy to see how it's lost the orientation of the collagen fibers. In terms of anisotropy, in the picture B, you have lost completely the anisotropy. So the repair mechanism will be very, very slow. And it is what we normally 
observed in case of aging, inflammatory damages, overuse, mechanical damages on the collagen fibers. In this slide, once again, you can see the mechanotransduction mechanisms of a tenocyte or also a common fibroblast. When the cell is in equilibrium, that's fine. When you stretch, you increase the ECM synthesis and you decrease the activity of collagenases. Instead, if you are not able to stretch the cell, you will observe the ECM synthesis going down and an increase in the activity of collagenases. That's a bad situation and it is due to the lost in that alignment of the fibers. Interesting, in this uh, uh, role played by uh, the fibroblast, what integrins do? Integrins are a sort of transmembrane receptors able not to bind only a substance, but also to sense a tensile force. And they are the actors of the mechanotransduction of this tensile force from outside the cell to inside the cell. And it's interesting also to see that from one side, they sense the tensile force, but also are able to bind type 1 collagen. That's the reason why we choose type 1 collagen because it is specific for the alpha-2 beta-1 integrin and from this binding three signal pathways start. One will lead to the cell survival, the second to the cell proliferation and the third to the cytoskeletal organization. So it's a, a really interesting approach, a very biological approach if we want to translate in terms of rehabilitative medicine, when you increase the anisotropy of a musculoskeletal ECM uh, tissue, it's the same that you ask your patient to do some eccentric exercise. The concept is the same. You stretch the fibroblast. Stretching the fibroblast, you increase the neosynthesis of collagen type 1. So, if this is not the condition because of, once again, overuse, chronic inflammation, aging, or traumas, you increase the activity of hydrolyzing enzymes such as metalloproteinases, which uh, increase the damage of collagen fibers, fibers, the loss of anisotropy. So, an insufficient neocollagen synthesis and histological decline. To visualize what you will reach injecting collagen, you will block all these etiopathogenetical steps, which uh, leads to the collagen decline. So once again, a very natural and biological approach. So to summarize what I told you about the action mechanism of this uh, uh, product. From one side, you injecting where you need, because this kind of therapy is site-specific, you replace, support, reinforce, and protect the connective tissues. But also, you increase the conditions of anisotropy, and therefore, the tensile forces capable of stimulating fibroblast, any kind, whatever kind of fibroblast, for the synthesis of autologous collagen. We have very strong evidence about what I told you from the research. In fact, uh, one, one and a half year ago on cells, we uh, published the results of a beautiful study performed by the Institute of Human Morphology here in Milan at the university about the effect of a collagen-based compound, MD tissue, on morphofunctional properties of cultured human tenocytes. The product used in this uh, preclinical study was MD tissue, a blend of 
swine origin hydrolyzed type 1 collagen and some ancillary substances where the most important one is ascorbic acid, the vitamin C, for the reasons I already told you. What is important to know in order to better understand the design of the study is that the collagen turnover is under control of specific enzymes. They are named metalloproteinases, which are involved in the, uh, in the um, digestion of the extracellular matrix, and the tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases named TIMS, which inhibit the MMPS. Well, if the ratio between metalloproteinases and TIMS is one to one, you are in a perfect collagen homeostasis. But if uh, overuse, aging, injuries uh, trigger some inflammatory processes, you uh, unbalance the collagen turnover with an increase in degradation phenomena and a decrease in neosynthesis phenomena. What we observed is that giving tenocytes in culture type 1 collagen under the form of uh, MD tissue, we increased the cell proliferation you can see that the cells treated with our product are those ones with the discontinued line. The continued line is a saline placebo solution. You can see that is a statistically significant, the difference between the two culture cells. Interesting even more, and you can see that the P is absolutely uh, consistent, is the collagen 1 protein synthesis. In different timing, 24 hours, 48 and 72, always the cells treated with our product showed an increased collagen production. Interesting, coming back to the ratio between metalloproteinases and teams, is that we didn't change the activity of the metalloproteinases, which is interesting because they are neither good nor bad. They are bad if too increased, but they are good because they are involved in the remodeling of a tissue. But why our product is so effective in repair and regeneration? Because it is able to significantly increase the activity of the tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases. So we control perfectly the turnover of the collagen. Last but not least, the data about the cell migration, which is quite impressive because you can see that the right side of the picture, the, uh, the, the tissue treated with MD tissue uh, accelerated the wound healing because of a strong central cell migration of tenocytes. So we can see really that we are involved in repair and regeneration mechanisms. So the conclusions of this nice uh, study was that we can observe cell, prolifer cell proliferation in tenocytes in this case. And better collagen turnover and a significant migration of uh, the cells. So our conclusions are that uh, we can use in that case, uh, no question, MD tissue for tendon healing and repair and to decrease the vulnerability to injury. This paper has been presented in several Congress. This is the Congress of the Italian Society of anatomy and histology, and also has been presented in Adelaide at the Isha Congress in 2018. Uh, recently, CELS published a second study very similar to the previous one, which demonstrates definitively that the main activity of our products is mechanical because if you destroy it, as they did 
with the cytocalazine, the cytoskeleton, these products don't work more. So their, their activity is definitively mechanical for an increase in the anisotrope. This is just a glance, because in two minutes I'm going to finish my speech. This is just a glance uh, about some of our uh, clinical trials on uh, collagen-based injectable medical devices. I thought that would have been interesting for you to see how versatile they are. They can be used in a different way. For instance, MD knee can be used periarticularly, but also intraarticularly. As showed in this important study published on BMC musculoskeletal disorder, and it is a double blind randomized active control clinical trial on the intraarticular use of MD knee versus hyaluronic acid in patients with knee osteoarthritis, uh, stage two and three, according to Catherine Lawrence scale. That's an interesting, beautiful study. But other MD, namely MD muscle, can be used in an intramuscular way. For instance, in this study, in the masseter area, in order to control the pain in the myofascial, um, pain within the masseter muscle. This is an interesting randomized single blind control trial where they compared our product, MD muscle, versus lidocaine 2%. And both in controlling pain and in reducing muscle contraction, our product was better than the lidocaine 2%. One of the most used techniques is the peritendinous injection. And in this case, I just want to show you the use of MD tissue, injectable collagen, in partial thickness tears of the sopraspinatus tendon. It is just a case report, but I choose it because I wanted to show you with the ultrasound the trend in three months in the reduction of the thickness tear in the supraspinatus tendon. This is really a beautiful uh, uh, image that shows absolute, absolutely the effectiveness of our product. Thank you very much for your attention. Hoping to see you personally and not only through a screen of the computer. Thank you and take, take care of yourself.